to hate this, but I got to say it because it's the season. But what's up, you turkey head and fuck? So, uh, little known fact about me, I do enjoy the odd racing game here and there. Okay. And yes, I am just going to completely go over that. Um, All right, fair enough. Uh, I don't I don't play racing games on stream because I don't know I don't think I don't think it's entertaining but uh, I do I do like to play racing games and uh, my favorite race game series is the Forza Horizon series and they just had uh, a, a new game launch uh, Forza Horizon Five which I've been playing quite a bit um, and the reason I bring this up is because uh, in that game they allow you to do like a lot of customization with your cars like you can really go to town with like like the color schemes, like adding logos, like it, it's crazy that the things that people come up with in that game, like the, there's so many of just like cars with just like anime girls plaster all over them, cars with just like lo lots of sponsor things, really cool designs. It's, it's, it's actually absurd, like how much freedom they allow. And especially in terms of like copyrighted content, like there seems to be like absolutely zero uh, uh, fucks given for that, for like. <laughs> avoiding that kind of thing it's like you know i i, I imagine their excuse on like a, a board level is like all oh, that players uploaded it it's not us right right yeah i gotcha so you know since i'm not a, a boring bitch i don't usually leave my cars with their default look i'll usually like go on to the uh the shared designs and see if there's any cool ones that i like um and i i, I there's a lot of different ones that i that I, I find that i think are really cool uh and so like you know, for example, on 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 one of my cars, I have a a, a Porsche Spider, which I think is a, a a nice car. I don't I don't know any, I don't really know anything about cars, so it just yeah, it looks nice. It's a Porsche, so whatever. Um, but it's got a really cool design. It's got um, it's it's all black for the most part, except it's got like an orange trim, and uh, the rims the rims of the wheels are also orange. And then uh, uh, plastered on both sides of the car is just the Pornhub logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so goofy. Yeah, so that's, that's a car I like a lot. And I just wanted to share that. I've been having a lot of fun with that game and putting the Pornhub logo wherever, wherever I can. Do you, do you remember that time at World Market when that like teenager just came in wearing like a Pornhub hoodie? No. I... I know, well, Tom and I definitely saw him, but I couldn't remember if anybody else was around, but Tom thought that was like the greatest thing in the world. Well, of course. It right. is, obviously. I mean, that does take I some just, balls just, just rocking some Pornhub swag. I just, I love that, like, in, I, I, I love that we live in a day and age where, like, like viewing and enjoying porn is not nearly as frowned upon as it once was. <laughs> no, no. It, it's just like one of those things where like back in the day, you didn't really talk like everybody kind of knew, but no one really talked about it. Now people are like, yeah, we all watch porn. Let's talk about it. Like what, what are we into? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. Right. You know, maybe share a link with your bros. Totally. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever actually done that, but you know, that kind of I, thing. I, I definitely haven't, but like, uh, um, there's a really big culture surrounding, uh, Japanese doujinshi, which is, uh, uh, they're the same as manga, but for porn. Um, and, uh, there's, there's a lot of like, uh, uh, doujinshi memes, which is really funny. Uh, <laughs> it's really funny seeing them get all shared around. And the really funny thing is like anytime someone posts like post posts a meme of those doujin cheese, it's you'll see someone in the content uh, in the comments uh, asking for the source for the meme. Like where, where what's the doujin that is referencing because they want to jerk off to it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and so it's it's like a capital crime to to like post one of those memes without posting the source because you, you'll get asked anyway. So you just you got to make sure to add it. <laughs> Oh, that's that's freaking great. That's really it's, funny. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Oh, and I'm glad I'm glad that those people can feel comfortable asking for that that jerk off material. I'm I'm happy for them. Right. Well, OK, like in the same vein, like you ever you ever look at a video with like untagged actors and uh, someone will be like, dude, who is that? She's super hot. 
And someone always knows. Like, someone always knows. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's so fucking funny. God, humans love them some porn. God, I love that shit. It's so fucking funny. I love porn. I love porn memes. What can I say, man? Right, right. Last uh, last episode we started talking about shit. This episode we ta- started talking about porn. What, what was that you mentioned about the 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 humor getting more refined? Yeah, yeah. You know it happens. Um, <laughs> it's cool. It was it was it was relevant. We didn't just throw it out there for no reason. No. Uh, uh, well, well, what you been up to? How's your week going? Uh my week's been going okay. Um, I got uh, I got my COVID booster today. Ooh, so that, epic. That's a thing. Um Oh. Um I did see uh I did see our boy Bradley on Saturday. Um nice. Yeah, so uh Friday I turned older and then uh Sunday was Bradley's birthday. So uh he had a little party on Saturday and that was that was uh it's pretty pretty nice. It was actually a really nice party. Um and uh I got to see Bradley's parents, Ty and Judy, and his sister Emma on uh on a, a video call at the party. So, you know, it's pretty dope. Nice. Happy birthday. I, well, I forgot that happened. Well, thank you. Um yeah, I mean I don't I don't really make like a huge deal about it, you know, like once you're beyond the age of like, I don't know, 21, probably they're really not that big of a deal. I I never really cared much to begin with. And the older I get, the less I care. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that that's what I mean. But, you know, I would say like. Once you get out of out of like kid age and then once you get out of like, you know, college ish, hanging out with your bros all the time beyond that it's just kind of like ugh, i'm just older now yeah well and, uh, and i'm such a like nihilist and it's it's like well time isn't real and and dates were invented by humans and none of it actually means anything and so it, <laughs> it's like this is just some arbitrary thing that humans came up with so why the fuck should i care that i'm now like one year older when a year isn't even a real thing it's just something we created right yeah it's like fuck it man i'm not i'm not 23 years old i'm 500 clip sclops old <laughs> right it means the same fucking thing yeah yeah for sure um it in in the same kind of vein a, to a degree like people getting super butt hurt and offended by like w- some words that that people say like it's all just shit we made up anyway it doesn't mean anything yeah that's that stuff really bugs me because it's like you being offended by it is what makes it offensive if you aren't offended by it it'll stop being offensive right right and there there is a fuck over it (laughs) there there is a little bit of a slippery slope there because there there are definitely words that i i still elect not to use but even obviously but like but even at, that at, at the at same time. Yeah, I was going to say, even at the most basic level, they're only offensive because we say they're offensive. Right, exactly. Like if, if tomorrow everybody on Earth decided that the N word was no longer offensive, then like who would give a fuck if you said the N word, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure. going to because I'm not a piece of shit, but I also don't care personally when I hear someone say it. Yeah, I don't I don't get, you know, super offended. But yeah, like you said, I just I choose not to use it myself, but I'm not going to I'm not yeah. going to lose my shit over it. Yeah. Um, I picked up some more G fuel in can. Oh, yeah, what'd you try this time? Um, there was like blue ice and uh, I had a Tetris and i haven't tried the tetris flavor i think is it like like phaseberry or fuseberry or something phaseberry yeah okay 
<laughs> it's an esports team, Mike. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> showing <laughs> showing my my boomer. Fuse, what, what is this? What is this? Fuseberry. <laughs> okay you know i'm not looking at it i just i don't remember it was like a week ago bro um um what'd you think uh the tetris was a little weird the other two i liked um do, what do you remember what the tetris flavor actually was yeah i want to say it was like some sort of like candy but i couldn't i couldn't really pinpoint it but it's it's a flavor i I've think definitely that sounds had. about right um that sounds about right um, like, I've had I've had I've had all but the Tetris flavor of of the canned G fuels. The Sonic peach rings was definitely my favorite. Um, Phase Berry is like one of the more popular flavors, but I was never personally huge into it. Same with Blue Eyes. Um, they also had uh, had that that PewDiePie flavor. I didn't I didn't try that one yet. It's a Lingonberry Ligma Berry. Oh, nice! Like those Swedes. Yeah, well, he's Swedish, so that's where that comes from. Well, that makes sense. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I, I I had that in powdered form. It's like kind of a sour taste. I wasn't, I, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Oh, no, I'll I'll definitely have to pick that up because I uh, I tend to gravitate more towards the uh, the sour flavor energy drinks than the than the sweet. So that'll probably work. And one of my accounts actually actually carries it. That's where I got um uh, the three new ones that i tried so it's uh it's expanding a little bit oh i was telling you last week that um i've got that uh i mean i, I guess he's my friend uh that he's also a rep for for another company that i i used to previously work with and so so we talk all the time and we were talking about the sleepover podcast and he brought up something. Um, it's not really something that determines whether or not it is a sleepover. But <laughs> did you ever like you and your friends ever get like yelled at for not going to bed? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. He brought that up and how they would like <laughs> they would like pretend to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, I, it was it, 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 it was a big thing just because like, you know, you're hanging out with your friends, you don't go to bed. And it was it was the same thing with like me and my brothers, although this was more of just like a troublemaker thing. Like um, our, 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 we had a, 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 a TV in our basement at home and it all, everybody slept upstairs. So it was really easy to like sneak downstairs and watch TV late at night. But wh when you're with your brothers, you tend you get a little get a little loud, get a little roughhousey and then you make enough noise that your parents wake up and then you get yelled at so yeah yeah that always that always happened uh that always happened at sleepovers um because i for sure at least with most of my friends um we didn't usually end up sleeping in the basement there might have been like one or two houses where we did but um from what i can remember most of my friends like their parents room was like very close to theirs. And so like if we were being too loud in their room, like we we were getting yelled at for sure. Mm, yeah. Sean's mom was always really cool about it. Uh when we would have our 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 group sleepovers, which I definitely talked about on the podcast before uh, at Sean's place. Um but we also were always in the basement, so I don't think we ever like bothered her too much. But we were also like decently respective res respectful about it. I mean we were like we were probably too loud in the basement, but like th the time that like Jake went up to the kitchen and snorted salt, like we were pretty <laughs> quiet about that. Oh God, that's right. You did talk about that. Uh, God, fucking I love that. Jake. I love that man. Such a good dude, but yeah, we got into some weird shit, man. I, I have pictures like archived on my Instagram. They're no longer like you, you can't see them anymore because I didn't want people to see them, but there's some. So weird fucking pictures from then from those those sleepovers, man. Oh man. We got into some weird shit. Um th this wasn't a sleepover thing, but I thought of I thought of a story uh this week that kind of reminds me a little bit of uh 
you and like the the sledding off the roof and not not wanting your your mom to find out that you were up there um i was older i was already like i was already driving a car so i don't remember why this was even a big deal um (laughs) moral of the story basically all i did was spoil my dinner (laughs) but (laughs) but for some reason i remember it being like a huge deal that i needed to keep this a secret um I think Mike might have been involved with this, too. Um, We went to like uh, uh, this this elementary school and we were we were playing roller hockey in the parking lot. And just around the corner, there was this little like local ice cream shop, which I don't know if it's still there anymore. It was called the parlor. That place was lit. Um, But they had the biggest ice cream cones you could ever imagine. That's so, awesome. so I think the only way that you could get like one scoop of ice cream was if you got like a child's cone. Um, but if you got like a, if you got a single, they would like pack the inside of the waffle cone and then it was three scoops on top of it. That's a, that's a big ice cream cone. That's a lot of ice cream. Well, they also had a double. Which, as you can imagine, was six scoops of ice cream. Well, they oh had a, my God, <laughs> they had a they had a mythical like like a secret menu triple. And I don't I don't know if they would make it for everyone, but I mean, we were in high school, so like we we knew a girl that that worked there. So I like rolled up in there and I was like, I want a waffle cone. I want a triple of moose tracks. And she's like. That's going to be like 10 scoops by the time you count what's inside of it. I'm like, do it. I'm going to eat the whole damn thing. (laughs) And by the time she was done, because, you know, like. It's hard to stack up that many scoops, like three, you just go one, two, three in a row, six, six. I think they had to make it into like um, kind of like a pyramid where it was like three along the bottom and then like two and then one on top. Jesus, that's so much. But the triple just ended up looking, it literally just looked like a cotton candy. <laughs> oh, did you eat all of that? I I did. I did eat all of it, and I felt really not great. And I'm then sure. And then I had to go home and I had to try to like force dinner down on top of that <laughs> to not Ugh. let Yeah, it was really bad. I think I ate like Like a tiny bit. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, mom. I just I'm just I don't feel good. And she's like, did you ruin your dinner? I don't know. Whatever the situation was. But for some reason, I remember not being able to let let my parents know about that. Um, So I thought that was kind of goofy. And somehow I randomly thought about that this week. Well, I. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that's a lot of fucking ice cream, so. Yeah, that's more ice cream than anyone should really ever consume in a sitting. I eat like I eat a lot of ice cream. I definitely eat bowls of ice cream that are much larger than one should have. Like I I, I you think of ice cream as like a dessert or like a snacky type food. I, I eat enough ice cream to fill an entire meal's worth of ice cream. Yeah, I uh on a regular basis. <laughs> See, I don't I don't regularly eat ice cream, but I really do like it. Like it, that might be the, my favorite of like the dessert foods. Um, ice cream is great. I know we've talked about flavors before, but what uh, what did you say your favorite is? Uh, probably mint chocolate chip. Oh, yeah, I know we disagreed on that because I lo- like I like mint and chocolate. But I just I don't like the mint ice cream. Like, I wish it was just like chocolate ice cream that was mint flavored. That had like mint added to it. What you want chocolate ice cream that has mint flavor? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like an Andy's. I don't. I don't like chocolate ice cream that much, personally. Oh, God, I fucking love chocolate. I don't know what it is. I've never been huge on chocolate ice cream. Like I, I, 
I, it's a, it's not bad. Like it, it but I, I can't have like just chocolate ice cream. Like I, I, I need to have like, um, uh, like double fudge brownie, uh, ice cream that has like brownie pieces inside of it. Like it can't just be chocolate ice cream. Okay. Like, okay. All right. Maybe, maybe like, uh, maybe chocolate ice cream with like thin mint cookies crushed up in it. I'd, I'd go for some of that. That could work. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, mint, mint, mint ice cream is fucking great. Yeah. I think I you're stupid and your penis is small. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't hate it. I just, it's never like my go-to. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if I can choose like a, fa- it's, it's like, it's like choosing a favorite song. Like how am I supposed to choose a favorite song? You know, how, how can I choose a favorite ice cream when I love all ice cream, you know? Right. Unless it's that fucking birthday cake or Superman shit. I do like some Superman. I know. I remember us talking about that and it's disgusting. Yeah. But nothing, nothing taps moose tracks though. That's still, that stuff's like, yeah, moose tracks is pretty prog. I I do miss that. Yeah. That stuff's the shit right there. Um, there's a, there's a local ice cream chain that makes really good ice cream out here. Um, it's called Umqua. And their like logo is, 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 is like, if you imagine it kind of like the Red Hawks logo, it's like just in, in a Native American w- person wearing Native American headdress. And I don't really know if it's like run by Native Americans or if it's just insensitive yet, but they do make good ice cream. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> I think maybe what, maybe what prompted me to tell this is I saw, I saw an ad somewhere for, um, there's that company out here called Hudsonville ice cream. And I think they have like a, like a peppermint stick flavor. And so I think it kind of like got, got the, got the ice cream on, on the brain. But I don't know that, peppermint that came up somewhere. Stick flavor. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It, it didn't sound great to me, but. You know, if you could have like, uh, like, let's say you're the the son of a, um, uh, an ice cream executive. Okay, you're like heir, heir to the ice cream name, and like you get you get a chance to create one new, um, ice cream flavor, and like. Don't even think about whether or not you think it would be good as ice cream. No matter what you choose, it will be good ice cream. What would you what would you make your ice cream flavor? Ooh, I think I'd have to go with something off the wall, like something savory. If 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 I know yeah, it's like make like a steak ice cream. <laughs> yeah, like I was thinking like a buffalo wing or something. Like <laughs> like uh like some I'm gonna make a jalapeno ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, like some some blue cheese ice cream with some buffalo sauce mixed into that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you could no no no, you could you could have like a buffalo uh ice cream and like it's mixed with blue cheese like like you would have like fudge swirls but it's just blue cheese inside your ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Mac, I I uh, this this really makes me wish that you still lived here because I for sure have an ice cream maker like I could to- I could I could actually make that happen. <laughs> That'd be so fucking gross. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I kind of want to try it now. Just just for just for oh. shits and giggles. Oh, oh my god, that's that, that's <laughs> such a hilarious idea. Just cracking open like a pint of ice cream and there's like blue cheese swirls on top. <laughs> <laughs> and blue cheese chunks throughout it. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love that. Damn, that's goofy. Oh. I just make a taco ice cream. Right? Yeah. Oh, God, you got like little like tor- tortilla chip pieces crumbled up in there. Yeah, a little piece of tortilla, little pieces like frozen lettuce just kind of stuck in there. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> what would the <laughs> what would what would the base flavor be like just taco seasoning? I think, yeah, it'd be like taco, like, like it'd be like beef seasoned with taco seasoning. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Does it have real chunks of beef in it? <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's just like a synthesized flavor. Okay. Okay. You don't have, you don't have t- too many textures in there because then it's just basically an actual taco. You know, you, you need to, you have to limit like the amount of like added toppings to like three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I gotcha. Oh, that damn, that's goofy. That's goofy as shit, but I love it. What else would be good? Um, God, I don't know. Let's see. Like other savory things. I mean, you brought up like. I'm trying to think of things that you would never make into ice cream or that would never even be considered as dessert. Yeah. We made a stuffed shells ice cream. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, anything like anything like like Italian food related, like. Like fettuccine Alfredo ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Little frozen chicken chunks inside of it. <laughs> right? Or like some pesto. This sound, all of these sound like something that Carissa would just make on an average work day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, God. Oh. Speaking of, she called me on on Saturday. Oh, what are you talking about? just her being her normal self she um her and her uh fiance were were going out hunting for opening day and she has like her own like deer blind that she decorated with you know like classic carissa like bottles of wine and like pictures of dolly parton (laughs) jesus and she was like yeah i only spent like a half hour in there and then I came home and went in the hot tub. She's like, I got to sneak back out there so he doesn't know that I came back. <laughs> Classic Carissa, like. Just always living on some sort of scheme. Oh, for sure. God. Like, she's great, but she's the worst. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, for sure. She's funny when you don't have to deal with her all the time. Yeah, she's just like one of those like presences that is just hard to be around. Yeah, yeah. At least for like long periods of time where it's just like, all right, this is getting tiring. Yeah, it's it's like like way back early in the podcast when we talked about Robin Williams and you said you think he'd be a hard person to be around because he's just like always on. That's Carissa, like just a really hard person to be around. Yeah, she's just got a real strong personality that you can really only take so much of at a time. Yeah. Like, remember those days when we'd have to spend like an entire shift reorganizing the stock room with her? It was like mentally exhausting. Yeah, exhausting like, is like the perfect way to describe it. Like, it, it was more exhausting being around her for that time period than moving everything inside the stock room. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> One, like that 100%. day would be less exhausting with anybody else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the only the only thing that came close to that exhausting was when I had to spend like. Like four hours hanging rugs on the rug wall with Marco. I knew you were going to say Marco. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I could have spent a whole day around Hannah either. I just like Hannah's just one of those people where like it, she's so hard to have a conversation with because she just doesn't get the things that you say. <laughs> and she would do that thing where she would look at you like a dog that hears something and like tilt her head to the side. And like the worst part, too, is you could never like move on. You would need to explain it to her or she would like try to redirect it back to it. Right. Like you can never just be like, oh, like wave your hand and move on. She would just be she would like ask you to like explain what you were saying. And it's like she just wouldn't get it sometimes. It would take it would just completely derail the conversation. Yeah. Well, you remember she would do the thing where. You know, you you'd say something and she wouldn't get it and she'd want you to explain it again. But then her response would be like, yeah, but what if and then like (laughs) come up with the opposite of what you just explained to her and be like, but what if that's true? And you're like, but it's not. I I literally just explained this all to you. We've already covered this. (laughs) 
Or like sometimes you just ask questions that like could not possibly be relevant to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, but what about in this situation? It's like, well, that situation would never exist. So (laughs) there you go. But but what if it did? Okay, but it but it doesn't. It it's never happened. It's highly, highly unlikely that it ever will. And if it does, just call someone for help. It's really not that big of a deal. Oh, that girl. Damn. I remember I remember working with her on her first day. One of the first things that um, uh, she ever said to me, and I was super confused because she gave zero context about it. Um, (laughs) She like she looks at me and she's like, it feels really weird without anything in my nose. (laughs) And I was like. Oh, 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 okay. And then I found out like two weeks later that she had like she had like her septum pierced and like took it out on her first day because like, you know, she didn't know if she could wear it or whatever. Um, yeah. And then she told this complete stranger that it felt weird not to have it in, despite the fact that you had no idea she ever had it in. Right, right. Like, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, Hannah. He's going to know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. that girl. Damn. Wonder what she's up to. I could not possibly tell you. I think she still follows me on Instagram. I never followed her back. Uh, I don't think I don't think I ever followed her on Instagram, but. I think she like Facebook friended me once a long time ago. And. I don't know if you know, because you're you're not a Facebooker, but like in the like the messenger portion of it, you can like wave at people. And she like sent me a wave and I was like. Hi, hi, Hannah. And she was like, oh, hey. And then like. I don't know. At some point she like unfriended me. Super weird. I don't. It's Cause you never waved back. Probably. I actually, I probably did wave back at her just to be like, God, where's this going to go and wave back. But yeah, she's real damn goofy. Oh, she had some very interesting. Um, she was putting out YouTube videos for a while. Was she? Yeah. Um, yeah. Bradley like followed her or somehow Bradley was always aware that new videos were coming out, but she would like talk about her dreams. <laughs> it was weird. Which just like a dream journal as a YouTube channel. Kind of. It was like dream journal slash like. Everyone needs to become a Christian because you're all going to perish channel. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That tracks. God, I can't remember. I can't remember what what word it was, but she there in classic Hannah fashion. She's like telling the story of her dream. And she like mispronounced a word like like multiple times. And I was like, what is she trying to say? And then like, finally, like the rest of the context clicked enough that I was like, Oh, that's what you were trying to say. It was great. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I'll have to say I had some, I had, I had I some gonna, weird dreams over the last few days. I wish I could tell you about them, but it's just been like, I've been kind of restless the past few nights and I keep having like weird dreams and like, at, at, at one point I was having like a really bad dream and then I woke up and I was like, boy, glad that's over. And then I went back to sleep and started having the same fucking dream again. That's so weird. Um, I've been the last probably like three or four nights I've been having really crazy dreams. And it was like, I don't know. Maybe Sunday night. It wasn't last night. It was probably Sunday night. I kept waking up like every hour on the hour from a dream. And then it would take me like another 15 minutes to go back to sleep. So I slept like complete ass. But um, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. 
I mean, they weren't all bad. They were, it was just like, it was got to be really annoying. Like, can I just keep having this dream and keep sleeping or just not dream and sleep? Cause this waking up isn't working. I need, um, I need, I need, I need to get more pillows on my bed. Um, I got rid of a couple of my pillows when I, when I left Michigan. So I only have one pillow on my bed right now. Whereas before I had three and I would always like, I, 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 I usually sleep on my side uh, and then Luna sleeps against my stomach. And so I, I like to put a pillow against my back so I can just kind of like rest against that. Cause she like puts pressure on me. So I start to like tip over. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Uh, and so that like, I, I think I'm like too used to having that. So it's like really hard for me to fall asleep without it. So I've just been like pretty restless since I moved. So I, I need oh. to pick up a couple more pillows. Yeah. Yeah. You need some pillows. I'm, I just roll with like the two pillow system, like one on each, you know, side of the bed, but, um, yeah, one had just one pillow is definitely weird. Yeah. Especially like on a larger bed, like if you have a twin bed, that's one thing, but yeah, you know, I'm on, I'm on, a, I'm on that queen size shit now. One pillow just looks awkward. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and you just kind of, like, if anyone sees it, they're just like, why are you a degenerate? Why do you only have one pillow? Like, you're a grown yeah. adult. <laughs> Get your ass another pillow, boy. Like, not saying you need, like, throw pillows all over the place, but you at least need one on each side of the bed, you know? Yeah. I feel like uh, w- uh, one pillow on the bed is just like a, a pretty good indicator that that person probably is not having sex. Not as like a rude thing, but just as like clearly no one else is sleeping in this bed with you. Right. Yeah. It, 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 like it's just you. You're you're clearly flying solo. Ugh, yeah. Sorry, bro. It happens. Um, not wh- to me. I have sex all the time. Right, which is why you need to get more pill- more pillows. Exactly. <laughs> there's a, there's a direct correlation between the amount of sex you're having number and the of amount pillows of pillows and the amount on of your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why that's why married couples always have like the mountain of pillows on their bed cuz they're fucking constantly. Right. <clears throat> Oh, damn. Or or it's like the opposite, like they're not having sex and they're like, let's try and spice things up. Let's get some more pillows. (laughs) Oh, that's goofy. We're on some goofy shit today, talking about steak flavored ice cream and pillows correlating to one's sex life. Yeah. Oh, man. Um. On the uh, on the topic of people that we used to work with, um, if, if you want, you can. Well, I, I guess I won't say his name. Um, the guy that we were used to work with the with the kids, the one that you that you kick the door into. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> he posted a bunch of photos <laughs> online over the weekend. And they're like, they're all blurry as shit. (laughs) (laughs) And I have to imagine, I have have to imagine that they looked fine to him. Oh, probably it's blind as blind as a dang bat. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was pretty good. I was like, oh God, Mac's going to love this. They're just, they're so, so blurry. Um, I got a, I got a story that I kind of, that popped into my head when you were, uh, when you were talking about, uh, pillows and the bed and all that, um, this was, wow, this was almost exactly, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 years ago, some, something like that. Um, because I remember because it was it was like the the night I think I think it was the night before Thanksgiving or it was on Black Friday. Um, my uh, my friend Ben, uh, he he lives in town here again now. Um, we used to we lived together for a couple years um, and then he moved uh, he moved out to California. 
And he was he was back home visiting for the holiday. And um, you know, he didn't immediately ask if he could stay. He's like, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop in Detroit. I got some friends out there, I'm gonna get a hotel room. And I was like, okay, cool, like hit me up before you leave and we'll do something. So I was uh I was staying up late. It must have been it must have been Thanksgiving night. I was staying up late uh waiting for like Amazon like Black Friday deals to hit. And he like gave me a call that was like hey, um is it is it cool if if I end up crashing at your place tonight? And I was like, yeah, I mean of course, but like didn't you just go get a hotel. And he's like, yeah, um, I, I'll explain when I get over. And I was like, oh, no, what, what the hell happened to him? So he got a room at this hotel. I want to say it's like Hotel Yorba, which I think is actually the name of like a White Stripes album. Um, <laughs> OK, you know, because they're they're like they're from Detroit. Um, but he like gets over and I was like, okay, like you going to tell me what, what was wrong? And he's like, oh yeah. Um, there were bed bugs all over that hotel room. And I was, oh nice. I was like, Jesus. I was like, did you, are you sure there's none on you? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I looked at all my stuff and I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I yeah, I trust you. It's fine. Well, we're like just staying up talking because um, I needed I don't know, I needed to stay up until whatever time. I think I was working overnights then. And so I was just going to like stay up and roll like straight into an overnight or something. I, I don't remember what it was, but we were staying up late talking and all of a sudden he's like, uh, yeah, so. I should probably let you know, like a half hour, there was a bed bug crawling on my pants. And, uh, oh, no. and, uh, I, I, I just saw another one and I, oh, no. I was like, bro, come on, you're killing me. So he ended up like, like changing his clothes and we had to do like a full on sweep of like the spot on the couch he was sitting and his pants and coat and backpack and like every single surface that he brought in with him. And we found a couple more. Jesus. But we were super worried because then we started like doing research on him and those bitches are hard to get rid of. Um, yeah, they are. Thankfully, we got rid of all of them, but I was super paranoid okay. for a really long time because apparently like bedbugs can go like a year without like needing to like bite and feed. So I was like that for the next year, I was like anytime I saw any sort of like weird red mark, I was like shit, they could still be here. Like, you know, it, it, oh God. Yeah. I, I'd be all paranoid too. Like those fuckers are a problem. Yeah. Yeah. They're really not good, but thankfully everything worked out fine. There were no, no live critters just hanging around. So. Oof. Yeah. Ben and the bed bugs. That was a thing. Yeah, we had um at, at my at my camp, one of the one of the cabins um had these really nice uh uh wooden bunk beds and like bed bugs got in there and you know, the camp sits pretty much dormant for like most of the year. So, we came in during the summer and it was like, "Oh, there's a fuck ton of bed bugs in here." Guess we have to take all these beautiful handmade wooden bunk beds and burn all of them because these bud bags are all in them. Oh my god. Seriously? Yeah, we like we destroyed like a lot of really nice furniture. 
because there was just bed bugs and we couldn't do anything about it because they'd been there too long. Damn. Damn, that is not not cool. Yeah, we never replaced those bed, uh, those bunk beds either. So they just kind of <laughs> were that that cabin wasn't very good for sleeping in after that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, that's 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 not good. That's not a good camp story. I mean, not all of my camp stories are good. Sometimes bad things happen. <laughs> right. Sometimes people just, you know. Steal shit from Mackinac Island and sometimes there's bed bugs everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> you get it. Um, I don't I don't pay a ton of attention to the news, but I um I had a news story like pop up as a as a notification on my phone the other day. Uh, it might have even been yesterday, actually. But apparently this woman, uh, this woman in the Detroit area got arrested for trying to hire someone to kill her husband which that part's not funny the funny part is she got caught because she tried using a fake website called rent a hitman oh good (laughs) and apparently like Apparently over the years, like 20 people have been caught trying to use this website <laughs> to hire someone for murder. You know, I'm not shocked. People are fucking dumb. People are so dumb. If you're dumb enough to try, if you're dumb enough to get your, your, your spouse your, to try to get your spouse killed rather than just divorcing them, then, it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it might've been her ex-husband, but either way, like. It ain't worth it. Like, you don't need to go get go getting someone killed. Like. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, I just. Yeah, I just thought that was real goofy that the website was rent a hitman. And she somehow thought that was real. This isn't like super related, but kind of is. It's really funny, like the mental gymnastics certain people go through to justify killing their spouse. Oh, yeah, because like. I, I, I like to listen to these like true crime podcasts and there's a lot of episodes about that kind of thing. Like a, a, a someone who got their spouse or tried to get their spouse killed and like a ton of them, a ton of them are like religiously motivated because there's a lot of religions where like, you know, divorce is frowned upon. And it's like, if, if God's not going to let you into heaven cause you got a divorce, is he going to let you into heaven for killing your spouse? Yeah. Yeah, like, where's the logic there, bro? (laughs) It doesn't make any fucking sense. No, no, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. (laughs) God, that's some backward shit right there. What are you thinking? It's it's so backwards. It's so goofy. Uh, People people are dumb, man. They're dumb, stupid idiots. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah, that that's real goofy. Um. Another goofy. If you were to get someone killed, how would you do it? Um, <laughs> God, I don't know. Um, I mean, I would, I would ask them to try my new experimental Buffalo Wild Wing <laughs> ice cream, but it's actually just laced with anthrax. I was actually kind of thinking that, but I was like, no, you wouldn't kill someone with, with that shitty ice cream. But I like that you thought that too. That's great. No, nah, man, like if, if you just told someone like, hey, I, I, I'm trying out like I, I want to try to get break into the ice cream business. I have this really experimental new flavor. Um, I think it tastes good, but maybe my judgment's kind of biased. Maybe could you try it and let me know if this is actually good or if it's bad, or if I'm delusional and they, it, it's just poisoned. And then your, your excuse can be, well, I was, you know, I, I, I'm an amateur ice cream maker. I must have accidentally used an ingredient that was poisonous because I was trying to get this specific flavor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, that's not a bad idea. I think it would work great. Right? If uh, anybody uses that, let us know in the comments how it <laughs> wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't use Rent a Hitman as a website, though. It's not real. It's just going to get you caught shockingly shockingly it isn't real yes god people are so fucking dumb um 
So previously, you and I, uh, we sampled a lot of a lot of plant based products together. Yeah, and we agreed that they're not very good. No, well, they are not. I didn't. Um, I didn't try it because why would I? It's it's stupid unless we're unless we're doing it for a gag. But uh, I saw this product the other day, and I didn't realize that it was plant based when I saw it. It was like a squeeze bottle, and the name of the product is just egg. And like, I figured it like it looked yellow. It looked like it was a clear bottle with like a yellow product in it. And so I thought it was like, you know, just straight up like egg yolks in there. Because I know you can buy like egg whites um, in like a carton. So I didn't think anything of it. And then like a couple days later, I saw an ad for it and it was like just egg plant based eggs. And one, that's such a stupid name. Just <laughs> just egg. And two, like, do we really need plant based eggs? Like, can we stop? If they're vegan, then yeah, can, I guess can, so. I guess. It just seems so unnecessary. Look, here's here's what here's what I'll say. You know, I I I work in a bakery. I work somewhere that produces food. I have for a long time. I've tried a lot of like gluten-free vegan foods. And you know what? For those people who live that kind of lifestyle and want those kind of things, I'm glad those options exist. But I have never had a single good vegan food. They're all fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, unless it's a food that was already just plants and is vegan because it's already just plants, like, sure. But if you, if you, if it's a food that is substituting something else to make something that would otherwise have animal products, I've never had something that tastes good. It's all been awful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. Yeah. They're not good. Like any of those, any of those plant-based meats that you and I tried, like at best, they were just like. This is a really bad version of what it's supposed to be <laughs> like. Right. It was it was either like a bad substitute or just bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Well, we eat meat, so we don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Thank fucking God for that. Ugh. I don't want to be one of those people. Uh, I don't want to be a lot of, I I don't want to be one of a lot of people. There's a lot of people who just, I I look at their lives and I'm like, you're an idiot and I hate you. Yeah. Mac, do you, do you interact much with, uh, with delivery drivers? No, I, I really didn't. I really never got much delivered to begin with, but like, especially with like the coronavirus, like every uh, website ever has the option to just like leave it at my door. And I always choose that. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure maybe at work. That was more of a, a work, oh, uh, work specific question. No, we have we have receivers to deal with all that. OK, well, you know, I'd previously talked to you about how um, I've had some goofy run ins with receivers and they they kind of seem like they're all like off a little bit. Um, but I had I had an interesting uh, an interesting day on Friday with um, with a couple of my delivery drivers. It might have been Thursday. Um, but I, uh, I don't really interact with them much on occasion. I'll, I'll like accidentally run into them when I'm, when I'm out somewhere or sometimes I'll need something and I'll have to give them a call. Well, one of my accounts, um, when I went in there the previous time, the, the manager was like, Hey, like, will you talk to your driver and not have him like just drop the delivery on the sales floor. He's like, I'm sure he'd rather hear it from you than like have me like call your office and complain about it. And I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I'll talk to him. So I waited until last week when they had another, another delivery going in. And um, I was like talking to my boss and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I need to like, I got to remember to send him a text and let him know. And he's like, maybe you should give him a call just in case, like, you know, like 
you don't want a text coming through sounding like you're telling him how to do his job. And I was like, okay, sure. Yeah, that that's actually really fair. So I call him and I'm like, hey. I, I just wanted to give you a warning, you know, like we would do that at World Market, like when, when we knew, you know, one of our GMs was pissed about something, we'd be like, hey, Tim, make sure you fucking do this before you leave or else you're going to get yelled at tomorrow. So it, it was one of those situations. And I was just like, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. Like, you know, he, he complained about the order being on the floor and in the driver's defense, he did nothing wrong. He was like, man, he's like, I've been doing this for like 12 years. I always ask an employee there where they want the delivery to go. He's like, I don't just drop shit places. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, now, you know, I'm just giving you a heads up. And he's like, that guy's a dick. He's like, I hope he does call the fucking office. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, I literally I was just trying to give you a heads up. And he's like, no, he's like, fuck that guy. And I was like, oh, OK, man. This is like a really big overreaction. Yeah. And so, like, I get off the phone with him and I'm thinking to myself, like, God, who who like pissed in this guy's Cheerios this morning? Um, but then it ended up being like, I don't know, like an hour later, he calls me and he's like, hey, man, I, I'm really sorry. He's like, I know you were just trying to help. He's like, I was just having a really rough morning. And I was like, OK, that's, that's good. That's that's wholesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it all worked out fine. And like I said, he didn't actually do anything wrong. It's the fault of the store for not like having all their employees trained on where deliveries need to go. Um, but that was goofy. And then a little later in the day, I, uh, I physically met, um, our other driver in town who I think I'd only met him once for like a second. Um, there's this other girl on our sales team. Um, and he was asking a question about her and he was like, uh, he was like, what, what, what's that one girl's name? And I was like, you, you mean Jacqueline? And he's like, yeah, 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 Jacqueline. That's it. And I was like, okay. Thinking like, it's not that hard of a name to remember. Like he interacts with her a lot more than he does me. So whatever well we're talking and like 30 seconds later he's like yeah i i uh i just i just uh i just had that that one girl she came in she came and picked up uh picked up some some of the the deliveries for me he's like well what, what's her name and i was like are are you talking about jacqueline again i like i literally just told you her <laughs> name <laughs> like her name's not that hard to remember um jay quellen <laughs> right oh yeah we've definitely made those jokes to her um and we're sitting there and like we're waiting for uh the receiver to like like check in the order he's dropping off and so i'm just trying to like make small talk with him and i'm like oh do you do you have a lot more deliveries it didn't really look like there was much left on the truck and he's like no 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 not not too much at all um He's like, I, uh, I started with, with 21. He's like, and this is, this is my, my 11th delivery. He's like, so he's like, what's that? Like, like 12 more. And like, I just kind of paused like, bro, it's, it's, it's 10, 21 minus 11 is 10. That that's a pretty easy one to figure out, dude. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And that, 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 one girl, she, uh, she, she picked up, she picked up two of her own deliveries and I was like, okay. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say her name that time. I just let it go. But he was like, yeah. So what's that? Like, like eight, nine more. And I was like, yep. Yep. <laughs> you were down to 10. She took two. That leaves eight. Yep. Yeah, so that was kind of goofy. Like 
after not this kid's a fucking moron. After not really dealing with either either of our regular drivers very often, I uh, I had two interesting interactions uh, with each of them in the same day. So I thought that was kind of kind of goofy. Delivery drivers be like, "Math is hard, and I'm mad." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's nine plus ten? Nine plus ten, that's like what, like 25? 21? 21? You don't you don't you don't know that meme. You're you're a boomer. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know that. It's a thing. So it's, it's a great video of um of this this guy. I, he's either talking to his son or his brother or something, and he's like, You stupid. The kids goes, not on that. <laughs> he goes, What's nine plus ten? And the kid goes like super confidently, twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice uh, was he like a kid kid like a child i don't know he looked like he was like eight ten years old he was old enough to know that nine plus ten is 19 yeah um speaking of like eight nine maybe ten years old i thought of something that i know i used to always do and i, I think all my friends would do it too when we were when we were probably that age. Um, and it just goes along with like dumb, dumb shit you do as a kid that you look back on and you're like, that couldn't have been, that couldn't have been something I actually enjoyed. Um, but when you went somewhere that had like, like fountain pop and you were like old enough to fill it up yourself, did you ever do the thing where you like filled up a little bit of every flavor into the cup? Oh, I'm sure I did. That was like a regular for me. Like, I don't think I went solo flavor <laughs> until I was like 14. Jesus. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't I, I don't I don't know what age I was, but I do remember doing that like all the time, like vividly. Maybe that's uh, why you don't like soda that much these days. You just you had like the ultimate soda and you can't get over it anymore. I know. Maybe I pff. Shit, I maybe I need to try that out again. Maybe it maybe it was as good as I thought it was. Maybe that's why I don't like it, because I don't have that ultimate mm-hmm. soda. Exactly. You know what you need to do? You need to go to like like a five guys where they have like those machines where you have have like every flavor of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just just get a little bit of every available option. <laughs> oh god, could you think of how funny? Well, not for anybody involved other than me, but could you think of how funny that video would be like of they're just like a line of people that's growing as I'm like trying to fill this cup with like (laughs) with like 35 different flavors. That'd be so fucking good. (laughs) I'm like, do you think like you think like if you added that much soda Taylor, like the soda flavors would start to cancel each other out until by the end you just had like a tonic water. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like like orange fanta and dr pepper equals nothing exactly yeah exactly like if you just added them all together would it just stop tasting like anything yeah they just they, they neutralize each other huh i don't know that might be something i gotta i gotta look into and then we can make an ultimate soda flavored ice cream <laughs> right it's like how um how sticky and slippery cancel each other each other out yeah like if you're equal parts sticky and slippery you're just you're just neutral you're just normal that's just equilibrium yeah huh Uh, yeah we're gonna have to test out this theory at some point yeah yeah it, find an empty five guys and be like guys i'm gonna need a few minutes <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's freaking good so i'm gonna someone's gonna have to have to video that though in case anyone comes up behind me just 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 hold hold on God. guys oh, i hate that you just used video as a verb oh you mean record It's like a huge pet peeve of mine. Like only only like old people say that. Can you video that for me? 
Uh, I'll film it for you. I'll record it for you. Video is a noun, not a verb, you fucking boomer. Uh, at least I didn't say tape it. Yeah, that's a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got to make sure I tape that. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tape it on your digital iPhone, you fucking moron. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a little cringy, I guess, but it's one of those things. You I, I know you notice it. Obviously more than I do, because I just used it, but. I feel like it's one of those things it's that just like I, people say. I, it's just if every time I hear it, it just like it sets off like an alarm in my head where it's like, what the. F- <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't I don't know. It just it's it's probably because like I'm a video guy. It just bugs me. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I think I've heard you even mention this before. Like I'm sure I have. It's like it's like a it's like a big pet peeve of mine. It really bugs me more than it should. Yeah. Um I just you just kind of scared the shit out of me. So like pretty much this entire time we've been recording, like one earbud has been like normal volume. And the other one was seemed like kind of quiet. And just when you said that they like both went full volume and I like literally jumped. It was <laughs> it, it was kind of goofy. I really wasn't expecting that. I didn't mean to scare you, bro. No, you're good, man. It's, it, it's all good. Um, I I saw a video the other day um of a guy uh panning for gold and it reminded me of um this great idea that my uh Sam who was my he was my uh freshman dorm roommate had uh <laughs> we were looking on on eBay um I I actually thought of this last week when you when you found the weird little Debbie uh ebay sale which those things are super cheap by the way i checked it out today a small box okay, is, good. a small box was like 219 and like the giant family size was like 399 oh um, yeah they were really ripping people off yeah for sure um but no we found this we found this ebay listing for like like this plot of property out in like, I don't know, Wyoming. And it was like, it was like an abandoned, like gold mine shaft that didn't have like any electricity. And it was like 20 miles away from like any sort of civilization. And there was like no running water. There were no buildings. It was literally just an empty mine shaft and sounds sick yeah but it was i can't remember how much it was it it was like i don't know twenty thousand or like thirty thousand for this like you know like 20 acres of like mine land and we we had said that that once we graduated college and got real jobs that we we needed to go buy a mine shaft and and go hang out there on weekends. <laughs> but we that sounds lit. We sadly never we've never gotten to the point of buying a gold mine, but he he did move out to Colorado, so he's getting closer to like gold country. So maybe he can Oh for uh, sure, yeah. Maybe he can check out some some more uh like eBay real estate listings for me. I've told you about that that YouTube channel Ghost Town Living before, right? I don't remember if I've ever mentioned this on the podcast, but I think I've told you about it. Is this the one where the guy goes around to like the abandoned amusement parks? No, no. Um, there, uh, this guy bought like a ghost town in California where there used to be like a huge silver mine, mm-hmm. and he's like slowly like he like lives in the mine town and like it is slowly re- restoring it into like a tourist attraction, and he. Uh, he posts all these videos of like him exploring the mines and like exploring all like the like abandoned buildings and shit. And like um, he he has one episode where he uh, he like sets up like a little like man cave inside one of the silver mines. <laughs> that's actually pretty. That's actually pretty dope. I like that. It's 
It's really cool. I uh, uh, I highly recommend that channel for anyone who's interested. Is again, it's called Ghost Town Living. Uh, I love his videos, but um, uh, I I swear I must have sent you this guy's videos before at some point because like this guy looks like and is living out like the dream life of our old coworker Jeff. Y- yeah, yeah, you you've definitely mentioned that to me. Um, I don't know if you've ever actually sent it to me before. Um. But yeah, because I, I know we, we've talked about how he just wants to like go out and live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no, it's it's like Jeff would look at this, what this guy's up to and be like, that's that's what I want to do. And like he even kind of looks like Jeff. So it's like perfect. Oh, of course he does. Of course, he looks a little bit like Jeff. Not at all surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because Jeff, Jeff, like fits the profile of what you would think someone would look like that would want to just like go off and live in the woods. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh, and so does this guy. Oh man. I miss that dude. I miss Jeff. Yeah. Just a good guy. You know, you know what I, what else I miss? What? Uh, this episode of the podcast. Cause it's over. And it, it, Mike's going to end it with something really funny right now. Yeah. Guys that, Look, I'm just going to be another minute at the fountain machine. Can you can you like hold up? <laughs>